Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we're going to be testing ESET Internet Security against a lot of brand new malware that I just collected from the wild west of the internet. This is a filtered collection from various repositories that includes latest ransomware, info stealers, adware, all sorts of things. And there's about 2,184 files, so that's quite a lot. And we're going to automate the execution of these samples on our system which is currently running ESET Internet Security fully up to date. And we're going to see how effective it is at protecting our system. We're also going to do some attack simulations to take a look at their zero day defenses. This is of course the internet security suite. So it does have various components and also their host intrusion prevention system. So we're gonna test this all in depth and try to understand how effective ESET would be. So we're gonna kick off with the malware execution part of the test. So we're going to run all of the samples that you just saw in this folder on the test system and we're going to see what happens <laughs> we're only running 2000 plus malware what could go wrong so here goes nothing as you can see we have a ton of alerts <laughs> popping up and we're also seeing a lot of files on the desktop so far we're only two percent in um, so that might get a little bit crowded now the reason we're seeing the files on the desktop by the way is because when we tried to automate their execution directly from the network folder ESET did not scan them now this is a common thing I've seen with a lot of different uh, AV solutions is they do not scan network folders because of performance reasons especially on the home products. But I'm assuming that was the reason uh, we did not get the detections register when we ran that test, so we modified it. So they're now being copied to a desktop, so we have the accurate detection numbers. As you can see on the alert section, we're seeing a lot of threats being detected. Some of them, of course, are executing. Now, we don't know for sure if every single thing that's executing is an actual malware. So we're going to do a quick investigation at the end of this to see if actually anything serious goes through the system and if it does any damage. But so far, we're sitting at a detection rate of about 99.26%, which is quite good. And we have a ton of different threats being detected. Some of these are being detected by the machine learning rule, so that's good to see. And they're specifically classified, so if we click on this, I think they might give us some information on it. We do have a very fast system here to be able to do this, thankfully. But unfortunately, the link does not really tell us a lot <laughs> about the malware detection, so perhaps that is something they could improve a little bit. So when we click on these, maybe we could get a little bit more than this generic about ESET research page. Maybe even just the broad category of the detection, because a lot of these are very technical names. Um, but to some extent, given the number of detections, I don't really blame them. And one of the things I do like about these alerts is that it says specifically that Python tried to access it. So it kind of gives you a clue in terms of what's happening on the system beyond just the detection itself. This is our first UAC prompt, and I'm going to allow it because we are testing ESET here, not Windows. We have a PUP alert for the first time for a coin miner that has been detected. So this used to be popular back in the day, a lot of coin miners mining Ethereum. Apparently it's still a thing. We're going to go ahead and clean it. Got 100 plus messages in the alert section here. <laughs> I like how ESET handles it, and it allows you to close all notifications. Small UI thing, but it is a pre Appreciate it, especially when running 2000 malware samples. Now, while this is running, I want to talk a little bit about performance as well. Oh, it looks like we have uh, some kind of password stealer potentially here. ESA does have a reputation for being fairly light on the system. I think that particular consideration is not as relevant today as it was maybe five years ago because computers have gotten really fast. But if we go into the real-time protection settings here, as you can see, they have a lot of granularity in terms of how you set up the scanning parameters. So you can scan on files being opened, created, or only on execution if that's what you prefer. They also have a few tools in the box that are kind of useful. So for example, you could look at any live network connections that are happening on the system. Obviously, this is something you could do with sys internals, but just nice to have, I guess. Um, but looks like our UI kind of glitched. <laughs> Let's see if the alerts are still responsive. No, it does seem like our entire system is starting to freeze up under the onslaught of uh, relentless execution, I guess. 905 files processed. We're sitting at 98.24%. So still quite good in terms of uh, overall detection. 
that hasn't changed. It could also be some kind of malware trying to take up CPU in the background. I don't want to push my luck too much because I do want this test to finish. <laughs> so that makes sense. So CPU is at 100% and we can see that 30% is being taken over by ESET. So ESET is actually hogging a lot of the CPU to process this malware. So Terminal, which is executing the malware, and ESET, which is dealing with the malware, are kind of competing for a top spot here. Windows Explorer, interestingly, is also in the mix. And it seems like we finally have control over the ESET UI again. And this is what I was talking about. So you have a reputation of all of your process to go with the number of users that have seen it. So for example, this particular sample that's running right now is very low number of users. So if something like Google Updater, for example, shows that it's very few users, that would be a huge red flag and you probably want to terminate it. Now, the intrusion prevention system itself in ESET has been there for a long period of time. I remember testing it very early on and it was not very effective in its original configuration. And if you changed it into a more aggressive setup, it would just end up blocking everything. So by default in automatic mode, it did not block much, but if you set it to any of the other modes like interactive, you would just have so many alerts, you would not be able to use your computer. So you would have to set it into something like learning mode maybe, and then switch back to interactive, but it was not very user-friendly. So I'm curious to see if automatic mode does more than it did back then. And that's something we might see in the later part of the test. I'm curious about your thoughts on this new UI. Um, unlike a lot of the other products, ESET has kind of stuck to their guns in terms of their original design and still maintaining this kind of transparent look, which I think goes well with Windows 11. But this is going to be subjective. So let me know what you think of this UI in the comments down below. We just had a Trojan dropper being blocked here. This is just a Packer detection, VM protect. Ooh, black screen. That doesn't look good. Another PUP. But now I'm just going to speed it up and get straight straight to the results with the magic of editing. Here we go. All right, it looks like our test is at an end and we have a final detection ratio of 98.22%. Total missed only 39 samples. So that's really good in terms of comparative results that I've seen. But the interesting thing is obviously going to be um, to figure out if we had any serious malware actually successfully infiltrate the system. From an initial glance, it doesn't look like that. I think most of things that executed were like a shitty games or installers that didn't even work because maybe they were partially blocked, likely some kind of uh, PU P's or broken files, but we are going to do a couple of second opinion scans. Also, we'll restart the system. We'll check auto runs. We'll see if there's any kind of trace on the system at all of uh, malware activity. The results are in and it looks pretty good. As you can tell, nothing much was detected. The only thing caught by malware bytes were a couple of registry keys, registry key, registry value. These seem to be related to some kind of adware. One is related to ad tools. One is like a start page modification potentially. But other than that, it's pretty much good. Also didn't notice anything in auto run. So not any kind of serious persistence behavior on the system either. So ESA did a very good job in proactively blocking the malware here. So now we're gonna move on to the next part of the task, which is gonna be super exciting because we'll be using our brand new Malix platform to create some really interesting tasks. As you can see, we have a variety of attack techniques that we can kind of just use or chain together to create whatever kind of attack payload we want. And I do have a pre-created package that I want to try. So we're going to try a backdoor agent downloader. Now, because this is a simulated attack package that we've just created, it shouldn't be something that's immediately blocked by the signatures, but we should be able to see if these behaviors are kind of mitigated by ESET. This is the kind of thing you would expect to see in an EDR test situation. So it's super fun, but also I would expect expect the complete behavior pattern to be blocked at some level by even a home solution. So I'm hoping something here is going to be blocked at least. And it does seem like Issa responded. It did take a while. A lot of it was not blocked, but at least one of the commands executed by Windows PowerShell, probably the behavior similar to a Trojan downloader, and it says threat removed. So if we go through the logs, interestingly, it says remote execution, remote run DLL block. So that was the one that was kind of prevented, but everything else um, in terms of creating a hidden user, using bits admin to download files in the background, these behaviors were permitted. But it's good to see we did at least raise one alert. Now let's try something a bit more 
more interesting. Let's try a ransomware behavior. So let's just try to download our quick encryption test. Now again, this should not be in the signature, so it should be very interesting to see how ESET is going to react to encryption behavior from a brand new file. Oh, super interestingly, it does seem like the file itself was detected as suspicious by the live grid system. So this is a pure reputation blocking mechanism that ESET has. So possibly anything that has file encryption capabilities and is not well known could be flagged. Now I'm curious if it's gonna give me any more information on this. Not really. All right, so we're gonna do one last test and this is gonna be specifically for the intrusion prevention system. So we've turned off the real time file protection and we're going to run a sample of Black Matter Ransomware. Why am I doing this? Because Black Matter Ransomware, though quite infamous, is now well known. So it is going to be detected and removed by the real-time protection system or the cloud lookups with LiveGrid. I'm well aware of that. But in theory, the intrusion prevention system should be able to detect and prevent unwanted behavior from applications. So I wanna assume, let's say this is a brand new ransomware group with a new sample that for whatever reason is not picked up by the real-time protection, maybe because it's too new, maybe it's obfuscated in a unique way. We wanna see if the behavioral protection in itself is able to prevent the encryption behavior, the impact on the system, or mitigate the damage in any meaningful way. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. And the thing we're looking for here is going to be uh, whether or not our, uh, oh wait, <laughs> I was about to say whether or not our files are encrypted, but they already are, uh, even though apparently a uh, URL address was blocked to paymenthacks.com. So unfortunately, I guess the answer to that is, is a no, unless we're talking about the specific URLs that are being blocked here. Our files themselves have not been protected and there goes the desktop background as well. So the HIPS or the intrusion prevention system in ESAT isn't really going to block the encryption behavior, at least not for this ransomware. And that is a little bit disappointing considering that now under host intrusion prevention system, it says there's a component called ransomware shield. And if we look at the description of this, it says ransomware shield is a behavior-based detection technique that monitors the behavior of applications, trying to modify files in the same way as ransomware. So again, based on this concept, it should have noticed black matter encrypting our files doing this and prevented that. But for whatever reason, that didn't happen here. If anybody at ESET knows why that's the case, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But those are our final results. I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth test of ESET internet security. We're gonna be doing the same for other vendors and doing a massive comparison, hopefully by the end of this year, using all of our Malix tools once they're ready. We are planning on opening it up and making it accessible to you guys. So you can register your interest using the link in description or by going to the pcsecuritychannel.com. Feel free to reach out to us if you would like to use our tools or work with us to conduct tests on your environment. And let me know your thoughts on ESAT in the comments below. Did it perform as you expected? Did it exceed your expectations? Or was it a little bit disappointing at the end? I know a lot of you have been asking, where are the security tests? There are a lot of big ones coming up this year. So make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications if you want to be the first to see those. This video is sponsored by Pulseway, a remote monitoring and management software that you could use to automatically manage, patch, and secure a large number of systems or an IT department. You get your own fancy custom domain here. So we have one for the PC security channel that we're gonna log into. Once we're two-factor authenticated, and once we're in, we're gonna see a list of our devices and the operating systems, and we have a whole section for automation. So we could set up any kind of script, or we could use any of the built-in scripts. So for example, if we're running a lot of storage, we could check drive fragmentation if we're using hard disks. We could check and install updates on different operating systems. We could clear the Windows event logs or create a restore point, protect our privacy. Basically, all of your system maintenance tasks you could automate for a large number of systems in an organization or even for your home environment. They also have their own patch management so you can make sure you don't have any vulnerabilities and they also integrate with Bitdefender for EDR or internet security. You also have a nice dashboard that shows you all of your alerts and this is not just for Windows computers. You could have Mac computers, Linux computers, all of your devices in one place, one view and automate the maintenance of all of them. So definitely check out Pulseway using the link in description. Should 
them some love for supporting the channel and our work. You can use the link in the description to have a look, try it out, see if you can benefit from it. I know a lot of your IT admins are have really complex home server setups, and this is something that could really help. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share it if you did. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.